sanctuary. Come on and clap your hands in the sanctuary. Come on and clap your hands in the sanctuary. We're commanded by the Lord to clap our hands in the sanctuary. do you like Jesus. Can't nobody do you like the Lord. Hallelujah. We love the Lord on today because he has been our provider. He has been our way maker. He has been our savior and our deliverer. The Bible says Jesus Christ is the same today, yesterday, and forever. And I don't know about you, but I don't know what I would do without the Lord. Hallelujah. And I don't want to find out because the Lord is good and his mercy endureth forever. And you know, life really begins to be meaningful with the Lord on your side. Life really begins to take shape and meaning having a relationship with him. So we thank God and praise God for our relationship with him. Even in praise and in worship. For me, it is taking on a new me, a fresh me. It is taking on an air of survival. As you need breath, as you need air to breathe, I need worship. I need to praise my God. Hallelujah. It's vital that I praise Him. It's necessary that I worship Him. Because I'm depending upon Him. And He's depending upon me. Uh, are, is the Lord depending upon you? Yes. Are you depending upon him? Yes. So you ought to give the Lord a praise. Oh, yes. Do you need him? As the scripture says, as the deer pants after the water brook, so panteth my soul after thee, O God. Is your soul thirsty for the Lord? Do you realize you need the Lord? Come on and give the Lord a praise. Hallelujah, I need him. Hey, come on, son. Hallelujah, I need him. I need him more than necessary food. I need him more than clothing and shelter. I need him, hallelujah, to be on my side. So I will give thanks unto the Lord. I will magnify the Lord. I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praises shall continually be in our mouth. Hallelujah, come on and give the Lord a praise. Hallelujah. And, I, and, and you know, I believe that everybody around me need the Lord. So everybody needs to give God a praise. Yeah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you need a breakthrough, you need to give the Lord a praise. If you need a healing, you need to give the Lord a praise. If you need some strength, you need to give the Lord a praise. If you need Him to be your provider, you need to give the Lord a praise. If you need him to be your way maker, your mind regulator, you need to give the Lord a praise. Hallelujah, he's worthy. My God, he's worthy. I said he's worthy. Amen, hallelujah. He's so worthy, I don't even care about the devil. Come on and give the Lord a praise. He's so worthy, I don't even care about the enemy. You need to give the Lord a praise. He's so awesome. I don't care about those that want to be silent. You need to give the Lord a praise. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. He's good. I said he's good. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. My God, he's so good. He's so worthy to be praised. I don't even care. I'm telling you, you don't care no more. <laughs> Hey, hallelujah, because he's just that good. I said he's just that good. I said he's just that good. He's the one that woke us up this morning. He's the one that started us on our way. Man didn't die on the cross for me. Man didn't give me my salvation. It was Jesus. I said it was Jesus. Hallelujah, in the end, man is not going to judge me. It's Jesus that's going to judge me. It's Jesus that's going to rip me up. It's Jesus that's going to say, well done, thy good and faithful servant. Enter me into the joy of the Lord. So I'm going to praise him when I have a chance. I'm going to clap my hands while I have a chance. I'm going to magnify him while I have a chance. You want to give the Lord a praise? Oh, 
Uh, next Sunday at uh, 3 o'clock, uh, we're going to be streaming here the elevation of, of, of me uh, with the Pentecostal Churches of the Apostolic Faith. Thank you, Lord, and you're welcome to come back at 3 o'clock on next Sunday to join in that service. Amen. Amen. Father, uh, we are looking forward to great things and seeing what the Lord is going to be doing. That particular conference starts uh, July 22nd, all the way, runs all the way to the, uh, I believe that Saturday is the 28th, if I'm not, or the 26th, something like that, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so it runs all the way to that Sunday. Amen. And if you want to get in on the, the empowerment sessions, you go to the PCAF website and you register. Uh, you can't uh, see those empowerment sessions. It's going to be a profitable of empowerment sessions uh, that is going on. It's all done virtually. And uh, you'll be able to get into those sessions and you'll begin able to enjoy what they have compiled together. The night services beginning on Wednesday are all going to be free. Go to the PCAF website and, and, and click on the live streaming button and you'll be able to uh, see those particular services. And generally, uh, the night services begin at 7 o'clock. Amen. So we're looking forward to a great opportunity in the Lord. We thank God even for our counsel that went forth on this weekend. Amen. We had some technical difficulties and things, but we kind of got to expect that. Amen. That, that you're going to have some technical difficulties, that you're going to run into situations and problems. And just because you run into situation and problems doesn't mean that you fail. Uh, because everything that you try and everything that you do, you're going to run into some difficulties and problems. The key is, is to persevere over it. Amen. The key is, is to press your way. Amen. And then next go around and do better. Amen. Amen. That should be our, that should be our, 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 our mantra. Amen. Do better. Pursue excellence. Until excellence is achieved. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So let us prepare ourselves. And also, too, you can uh, renew your licenses and renew your uh, information right online. If you need help with that, please uh, let me know. Uh, Sister Kathy knows how to do it. And Sister Carissa, they know how to do it. We all took the training. Sister Yolanda as well took the training as well. So uh, see any one of those individuals to assist you uh, to, if you want to uh, receive your credentials and your, uh, your worker's license, if you allow me to say it that way. Amen? Amen. I'm excited about what God is doing for us here at Christian Ministries. I'm excited about what the Lord is about to do on every hand. Amen. So without further ado, I want to move into the scriptures on today. Amen. Amen. How many of y'all come to hear a word? Amen. <laughs> Thank Amen. you, Lord. Uh, I come to hear a word too. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Thank you, Lord. I thank God because his word is what keeps us going. Yes. Amen. And we had fasting and prayer yes. on last week. Um, uh, we're going to have our prayer session, fasting and prayer. Let's have it on Tuesday this week. Amen. Amen. So that we can be free and fresh for our conference that's coming up uh, with the PCAF. So Tuesday at midnight, amen, and when I say Tuesday at midnight, uh, at, at 12 a.m. Tuesday, go to Tuesday at 4 p.m., amen, with our fasting and our prayer. And the reason why we're fasting and praying is for our church, amen, that the Lord will give us strength, amen, and the Lord will give us power, that the Lord will give us an anointing. Yeah. And it's, it's very important, it's very important um, that we maintain a lifestyle of holiness. Yeah. And we maintain a lifestyle of righteousness. Because if you don't, then your fasting and your prayer is in vain. Yeah. It's very important when you come into the sanctuary that you worship and praise God. As we were worshiping and praising God here on today, many of you were just sitting around, and I don't know where your mind is, but you need to draw in your mind in the sanctuary to be able to worship Him 
in spirit and in truth. It's difficult to, uh, if we were in a, it's like being in a tug of war. You've got some saints uh, or some people on one end trying to uh, pull us into the Lord. And then you got people on the other end, whether by reason or not, they know it or not, they're pulling to keep you out. Amen. It's good to follow after one way. Amen. It's good to go in in one way in worshiping and praising the Lord. When we, I'm, I'm, gonna I'm teaching you here today. Thank you, Lord, that, that, that when we worship and praise the Lord, uh, the praise team is not there to entertain you. No. And so you don't look uh, on them as spectators. Right. Amen. The spectator, the, who the true spectator is, is the Lord. Yeah. The Lord is watching you. Amen. The Lord is keeping his eye on you yeah. as, as you worship and praise him. So in other words, you know, in a nutshell, we entertain him. Yeah. Amen. The praise team doesn't entertain us. Amen. So don't think that uh, uh, they're there to help you to enter in. Amen. Y'all, 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 I'm telling you the truth. Thank you, Lord. So as, as we worship and as we praise the Lord, amen, we tune our hearts and our minds in on the Lord and enter in. Amen. With one accord. The scripture says how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Amen. 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 Isn't it better to, to push the cart, uh, everybody pushing in the same direction? Yeah. Isn't it better uh, to work together? Yeah. Uh, hallelujah. Instead of uh, being a chuck in the wheel. Right. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Oh, y'all don't hear me today. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So y'all going to make me say something. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. But it's good to come to the house, yeah. amen, with a mind that I'm going to praise the Lord. Yeah. And, and I'm going to say this, and then I'm going to move off of that point, that I know it's difficult to come into the house of the Lord and praise and worship Him if the six days a week you ain't had your mind on. Right. Uh, it's difficult to come into the house and oh, to I give Him glory and honor uh, if, if you ain't been seeking Him uh, the rest of that time. Amen. So so let us seek him. And the scripture says, while he may be found. And call upon him while he is near. Amen. I don't want to waste my Sundays. I don't want to waste my Bible studies. Amen. I don't want to I don't want to waste any time in the presence of the Lord. Time is winding up. Time is too short. Amen. Hallelujah. So as we uh, get ourselves together as we uh, strengthen ourselves, as we make adjustments to our lives. We should never, no, no, never count the Lord out of our life. Amen. Amen. He is our strength. Yeah. Amen. He is our refuge. Yeah. Am I right? Yeah. Hallelujah. He is our fortress. And you may get tired of me saying that, but I'm going to say it because it's the truth. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. We got to stop listening to the devil. <laughs> yeah. uh, we got to stop uh, listening to our own minds and to our own selves. Amen. We got to listen to the Lord. Yeah. Uh, we got to we gotta do what's right in the sight of the Lord. Am I right? Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So as you're standing to your feet, thank you, Lord. And go with me to the book of Proverbs. Proverbs. Chapter number 12. Thank you, Lord. Proverbs chapter number 12. If you have to say amen. Thank you, Lord. And drop down with me to verse 13. And I just want to focus on part B of that particular scripture. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 13, part B. It says, but the just shall come out of trouble. But the just shall come out of trouble. Can we say that together? But the just shall come out of trouble. 
Oh, gracious Father, in the name of Jesus, we certainly thank you for your word on today. We thank you for the anointing that is in this place. We thank you for your great people, the hearers and the doers of your word. We ask you, Lord, that you sanctify our minds, give us the door bodies, and Lord, we ask you to send us that rain up, uh, in the name of Jesus. Heal the few sick among us, strengthen our hearts, meet our, our, our issues, and answer all of our questions. Father, we thank you. We praise you in Jesus' name. Transform us, renew us. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. And as we have read in your hearing that part B of that particular scripture, but the just shall come out of trouble. The just shall come out of trouble. And I just want to take for a thought from that particular scripture, I'm coming out. I'm coming out. I'm coming out. Job says, y'all remember the, I'm calling the apostle, the prophet Job. <laughs> Job says, and a man that is born of a woman is a few days and full of trouble. And that simply means that those that are born have a short life and there's going to be trouble on every hand. This is a man that's referring to men and women that we are destined for trouble. And Trouble has a way of literally finding you. You don't have to be looking for it. You can be on your back porch sipping your own tea uh, and trouble will find you. Job, even his own life, he was worshiping and praising God and trouble came his way. Trouble has no respecter of person. You can be righteous or unrighteous. Trouble will find you out. Trouble has a way of, of finding those that uh, are even trying to live right and do right. Trouble has a way of finding you. We often sing a song, Trouble in my way, I have to cry sometimes. <laughs> but we know that Jesus will fix it after a while. I found out that the difference between uh, Trouble, you surviving trouble and you not surviving trouble is having God on your side. The difference maker of you surviving trouble, though trouble may come to you, may come to someone else, though it comes, the difference is that one has God on their side. God is the difference maker. The scripture says that many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord, he's there to deliver us out of them all. If you were to read the scriptures, the scriptures would tell you that the Lord will be a refuge for the oppressed, a refuge in the time of trouble. The scripture says, call upon me in the day of trouble and I will deliver thee, and thou shalt glorify me. God will deliver you in the face of trouble so that you can glorify him. If you call on him, he'll answer. If you seek him, you'll find him. Trouble, trouble. The Bible says that though I walk in the midst of trouble, thou shalt revive me. Thou wilt stretch forth thine hand against the wrath of mine enemies, and thy right hand shall save me. God will save those that are walking through the midst of trouble. God will revive those that are in the midst of trouble. I'm reminded of David when he said, the Lord is my shepherd, and I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters and catch this he restored my soul God. Uh, the Lord will restore your soul in the midst of trouble 
The Bible says that they that wait upon the Lord, they shall renew their strength. Uh, they shall mount up as wings of eagles. They shall walk and not be weary. They shall run and not faint. Wait, I say, on the Lord. And if you wait on the Lord uh, in the midst of trouble, in the midst of anguish, in the midst of pain, in the midst of tribulation, God will answer your prayer. If you seek the Lord, the Bible says, come boldly to the throne of grace that you might obtain grace and find help in the time of trouble. Whenever you are in trouble, uh, though trouble may be around you, the Lord is able to deliver you. The Lord is able to bring you out. The scripture says that many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord. Uh, is something about the Lord that is on our side that will cause an individual to come out of circumstances and come out of trouble. Uh, if we were to go to the book of Psalms, Psalms chapter number one or division number one, the Bible says, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor seateth in the seat of the scornful. Then it says that his delight, his joy, and his happiness is in the law of the Lord. And in his law doth he meditate, in his law doth he meditate day and night, night and day. And he shall be like a tree that is planted by the rivers of water. The Bible says that his leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth, it shall prosper. And then it goes into verse number four, is what we have there. He says, and the ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Uh, in the midst of trouble, in the midst of struggle, the ungodly person is one that, that uh, uh, claims to be on God's side, but live as though God does not exist. And that type of individual will meet an end that is undesirable. The Bible says the ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. He says, therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. Uh, when you are living in an ungodly life or a sinful life, in the time of trouble, it will consume you if you don't turn your heart and your face to God. If you're not living a righteous and a holy life and an ungodly life, uh, uh, trouble will have a way of consuming you. But the Bible says that in verse number 6, For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, uh, but the way of the ungodly, it shall perish. My brothers and sisters, my sisters and brothers, I'm, I'm giving you the right answer to situations that may be in your life. In today's age, this type of preaching is not popular, but we're coming too close to the end to try to end up in popularity. I'm not trying to win a popularity contest, but I'm trying to win your soul. I'm trying to give you some information that is needed and necessary for you to make the right decision. For you to make the right decision as you're following after. anybody that everybody is going to experience trouble uh, not more than once twice uh, but as long as you leave uh, you're going to have trouble in your life uh, trouble and affliction it literally starts on day one uh, when a baby comes out of the womb uh, they get spanked on the behind uh, 
and that equates to trouble. Uh, uh, but you have to realize that some types of trouble and some types of struggle uh, that we experience in our lives, uh, I've come to the conclusion that if nobody's exempt from trouble, that trouble and affliction is unavoidable, that it must be ordained of God. I won't let this sink into your mind here on today. That if trouble is unavoidable, and if all of us, whether you're righteous or unrighteous, you're going to experience trouble. So you have to come to the conclusion that trouble is ordained of God. If you can't avoid trouble, if you can't avoid situations, and if you do good, trouble is always going to be in your midst. It has to be ordained of God. When we look at the scriptures here on today, when we think about the word of God in our hearts and in our mind, the scripture tells us that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. If you subscribe to that scripture, right, that all things are working for your good, right, you have to conclude that even trouble, right, that trouble that's in my way, right, it's working for my good. Right, and it's working for the good right, to them that love God. As I was meditating on these particular scriptures, the Lord said to me that though I, people love me, the Bible says that God is love. And we think sometimes in our minds that love is a hug, that love is all mushy, that love is all cuddly cuddly, but love is also correction. Love is also straightening an individual out that may come against what is good for them. In other words, as you as a parent or you as a friend, sometimes you have to stand against your family member or your friend that is making the wrong discretion out of love. They're making the wrong decision. You have to stand against them out of love, which in their own mind, they may think that you are against them. But you're really for them. My brothers and sisters, when God enters into our life, God loves us. And whatever trouble and struggle he allows to come our way, we have to remember that God loves us. As the scripture says that many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord Somebody say the Lord. The Lord will deliver us out of them all. Uh, trouble in my way. I'm trusting in the Lord. Uh, trouble on every hand. I'm trusting in the Lord. I want you to draw your minds in with me. Uh, I'm about to go into my first conclusion. Uh, when we think about the scriptures uh, and we think about trouble that is equated to each and every one of us uh, I'm reminded of the Apostle Paul uh, you see the Apostle Paul he looked at everything uh, through the lens of Jesus Christ uh, he looked at everything from a standpoint uh, that this is happening to me uh, for the furtherance of the gospel uh, of Jesus Christ my brothers and sisters, you have to equate the test and trials that you're going through as being ordained of God. Or whether or not the enemy has brought it to your doorstep, or whether or not God has allowed it, you've got to look at whatever struggle, whatever problem, whatever situation that you are facing as a God moment, as God is trying to get my attention, as God is trying to lead me in a path of righteousness for his name. 
sick. You've got to look at storms in your life as opportunities to magnify the God of your salvation. You've got to look at the struggle and the fight that you even have within your flesh as an opportunity to manifest the victory that is in Christ Jesus. You've got to look at the opportunity that is manifested in your marriage as an opportunity that God who I serve day and night will see receive glory out of this. Whatever you're facing, whatever relationship you're in, it may even be on your job. You've got to come to the conclusion that it's God ordained, it is God divine, and He shall get the glory out of this. You've got to realize, brothers and sisters, uh, that you have to see everything uh, that you are experiencing uh, through the lens of Jesus Christ. Uh, the reason why I say that is, uh, is because Paul broke that down uh, in the book of Corinthians. Uh, the in Corinthians chapter number one, uh, he proclaimed God uh, to be the God of all comforts, uh, who is able to comfort me uh, in my affliction. Uh, you've got to proclaim that God, uh, that God he is the God of all comforts, uh, that he's able to comfort you uh, in all of your affliction. Uh, you've got to realize uh, that when God comforts you, uh, you take that same comfort uh, and you'll be able to comfort uh, others that you come in contact with with the same comfort that God has comforted you with. You see, no opportunity is wasted with your God. And we shouldn't waste any opportunity in our lives because God is a God of comfort. God is a God of mercy. God is a God of love and kindness that is evil. Somebody say God is able. God is able to do exceeding and abundant. He's able to comfort you in the midst of your storm. I'm thinking of Jesus when his disciples were on the boat and they thought that the boat was sinking and the storms in their life were raging. And Jesus said, Peace be still. They cried to Jesus and said Master, carest thou not that we perish in the midst of your trouble if trouble hit you the right way it can turn your focus unto Jesus who's the author and the finisher of your faith and you can cry out and say Master, carest thou not that we perish and because of your angst it's because of your anxiety you will see the hand of Jesus move in your life and he will say peace be still oh my God if it had not been for the wave if it had not been for the storm if it had not been for the tribulation I wouldn't know the master who was able to calm the sea I wouldn't know the master in the midst of my test, in the midst of my struggle, I would know him, oh my God, that is able to save my life. Oh, I see why he said, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. Let not your heart be troubled, oh little sheep of God. Let not your heart be troubled, man and woman of God. You believe in God. You believe in Jesus, who is able to save your soul, who is able to turn your situation around, who is able to speak peace in the midst of your storm. You gotta give God a praise.
You ought to magnify the name of the Lord. So we see, brothers and sisters, we got trouble on every side. But we should not be distressed. We got trouble and we may be perplexed. But don't be in despair. You got persecution. But you are not forsaken. You may feel like you're cast down. But the Bible says you are not destroyed. Always bearing about the dying of the Lord Jesus in your mortal body. So that people may know that there is a Savior. That there is a deliverer. That there is somebody that cares about you. You've got to know that when you are in trouble and you seek the Lord, that you're coming out of this. Although oh, they may slay me, yet but I trust in Him. Oh, if God be for me, then who then can be against me? I am confident. You've got to be confident. You've got to be persuaded that neither life nor death. No principality, no power, no things present, no things yet to come shall be able to separate you from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Do I not anybody that is saying, Lord, I'm going to trust you. I'm going to lean on you in my time of trouble. Do I not anybody in the house? That's persuaded that I'm coming out of this. I'm coming out stronger. I'm coming out better. I'm coming out with a praise. I'm coming out with a worship. I'm coming out with strength. I'm coming out with power. I'm coming out with a victory. I'm coming out. I'm coming out. I'm coming out. You want to give your God a praise. He shall receive glory after this. He's going to get glory after this. I'm coming out. Devil, you should have killed me when you had an opportunity. I'm coming out. 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 So that Lord, you can get the glory. Yeah. So that you can get the glory. Yeah. Remember what you're going through is God ordained. Yeah. Whether you're spiritual or unspiritual, it's God ordained. Yeah. Uh, whether you acknowledge it or you don't acknowledge it, it's God ordained. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. Hey, and if I use the trouble to my advantage, yeah. if I use the trouble to come forward into the throne, and cry out to him that is able to strengthen me, that is able to open up the windows of heaven, that is able to pour me out a blessing, that is able to move on my behalf. I'm coming out. And to the most son of us, I'm coming out. I'm coming out of this. in the Lord in these 66 books has lost the battle but thanks be to God that giveth us the victory to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ yeah. we gotta change our focus we gotta look through the lens of Jesus we gotta see things through the eyes of Jesus who's the author and the finisher of our faith who for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. Yeah. He despised the shame My Lord. to give you the victory yes, sir. so you can come out of this. Hallelujah. Clap your hands and give God a praise. 
I'm coming out. Now the scripture says, the just shall come out. So that's the qualifier. So then for me to be just, I got to get baptized in the name of Jesus. I got to get filled with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost. And I got to declare Jesus as my Lord and my Savior first. I got to repent of all of my sins. And he said, the blood of Jesus, it will cleanse me from all unrighteousness. That's how I become just. That's how I become righteous. And the righteous, the Bible says, shall walk by, shall walk by, and not by. Ah, uh, you got it. Come on, clap your hands. Come on and clap your hands. So if you're facing trouble, if you're facing struggle, that is ordained of God. We declare that in the message. Am I right? It's declared of God. And the ungodly and the sinner, they shall perish in the midst of the trouble. The trouble is not meant to destroy you. The trouble is meant to you to bring you to God. Uh, if trouble was never in my way, I never would have repented. If <laughs> oh, come on, Bishop. Preach up in here. If trouble was never in your way, you would have never repented. And if you would have never repented, you would have never known God. The creator of the universe. The Alpha and Omega. The beginning and the end. You would have never known the healer and the deliverer. Oh, God. Oh, God. Uh, I'm not a slow tell at all. If you haven't ever repented, you would have known, never known joy. Uh, you may have been acquainted with happiness, but those that get in Jesus, they get joy unspeakable. Uh, and it's full of glory. Uh, it's joy that I have. The world didn't give it. And the world can't take it away. Hallelujah. So today the Lord is saying, mm, the Lord is saying that the trouble you On a consistent basis, because you know, struggle and trouble. Don't get me wrong. I don't want to put a false doctrine in your head that the Lord, the Bible says, the Lord reigns on the just and the unjust. It's the Lord that's keeping you unto this day. It's the Lord that, if you're unjust and you're unrighteous, it's the Lord that has not allowed the trouble to consume you. Huh? The Bible says, the day you hear His voice. Oh, this is the Holy Ghost talking here. He said, harden not your heart. Hallelujah. Uh, the way of a transgressor is hard. Amen. My God. The people here that are walking with the Lord, they have trouble. They have situations that come into their way. But you got help. You got help. And having obtained mercy of the Lord, I continue unto this day because I got help. How many of you know it's better? To bear a burden with somebody else. Amen. Instead of bearing the burden alone. Amen. I don't want you to be alone my friend. Hallelujah. If you want to be baptized in the name of Jesus. You can come now. And we got water. We got clothes for you to change into. Hallelujah. We got preachers to put you down in Jesus name. And if you fully repent. God will fill you with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost. All you got to do is come. Come without money, come without price, just come trusting and believing in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He said, if you confess him, hallelujah, he's faithful and just to forgive you all of your sins. And the blood of Jesus uh, will cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Hallelujah. Come on and clap your hands and give God a praise. Thank you, Lord. I enjoyed the message on today. Hey, let the church stand. Hallelujah. My God. We coming out, Pastor. Hallelujah. We coming out of all the work. Amen. Sister Cora, we coming out. Hallelujah. We coming out. Hallelujah. Sister Weeks, we coming out. Sister Kathy, we coming out. Uh, Sister Yolanda, we coming out.
God, we doing what? All right, coming out, coming out of this. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. John Lily, what are we doing? Yeah. <laughs> Come on, man. Uh, he said, we coming out. Hallelujah. First lady, what are we doing? Coming out. Coming out of this. Coming out of this. Oh, because no weapon formed against us. We coming out of this. We think they endure for a night, but joy coming in the morning. We coming out of this. We coming out stronger. We coming out better. Hallelujah. Uh, uh, I believe that uh, God allowed this corona. Hallelujah. But the corona is not going to stop his praise. The corona is not going to stop his worship. We coming out of this. Hallelujah. My God.